Is that fa- the whole family that <laughs> uh, <laughs> flipping? If if it's not police coming to the door, actually, then... when we stayed behind, that's when it led to me getting stabbed on my my left arm. Um, so from here to here, there was no sitting on the fence because there was actually a war in Newham. Look, I believed in the heavens, but I was standing in hell. Wanted to be a fool or just a bit of myself. When my blood got so oh, bummed, if you're watching that, it was your fault why I'm like this. So, so yeah. More than my girl. I was actually stabbed. I think that was a turning point for me. I felt like if I didn't carry a knife at that point, it was either be killed or be killed. So like, I didn't have no interest in, of, of rapping and that. I felt like um, the reason why I was so anti and the reason why I was um, committing all those crimes was because what was done to me. But I don't think a lot of people realise that when I was stabbed, it, it changed my whole mindset. So I thought, you know what, anyone can go, like, I'll do whatever. So I didn't even want to rap. But, um, because like, I, I wanted to find another way to actually express myself um, more than words. So when I was actually um when I was actually putting in that work, wasn't I wasn't putting the work to be a rapper. I wasn't putting in work to um impress the internet or like like make any buzz from it. I was actually putting in that work because of how I actually felt inside. Like I didn't have no other way to express myself. Music's just been like a, a like a constant throughout my life anyway. Like I said, I've I've had mad influences from my brother or my cousins or even just my, my family in general, people that I've been around and as a culture the era that I grew up in, in South, inner city, South London, as a young black boy, that's in the urban scene, music is heavily intertwined with everything that you do. From flips, I got to save these lives. The window I slide, my phone out the ride. Whenever we go on a glide, Perfect. all just to take down numbers. Broski stretched the hope it did lunges. I ain't talking about dinner or lunches. When I say I'm giving up, burst to punters. That's oh, my mum, she thinks I'm tap. Collapse. Man put swords in backs, it's mad. Trying to get all this back on my mums. These drill kids are my sons. I'm so comfy on my ones, but I still did a drill with I'm in Pharaoh oh God, can't only fake God, then that's on my mothers. Oh, my mothers. They want me to put another body on my mask, but success is my new repercussion. <laughs> I got hitters around me, they go when I say it, end of discussion. <laughs> there ain't no telling what I do for my brothers, consider I love them. I love them. I my only love me when I'm aiming at man, I should be aiming for grand. I thought my nigga like traps, look, we need to expand. Lot of papers to plan. And, and now came along, I started doing music with my friend Traps from Beckton and Hazer. They started doing music and I started jumping on songs with them. Um, I've done songs like um, with Hazel, Rage Reloaded, done songs with um, traps like Drama, Save My Life and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I started making music and that. Um, going to the booth and I, like, and I, I always used to smoke and stuff like that, so I wasn't really the, like, the best thinker, you know what I'm saying, when it came to the music stuff and that. But the only thing I could actually do was express like, words that I actually felt. So like, where, where my friend Traps will come hard with punchlines, like... I didn't really have the mind for that. I just thought, I just used to talk crud because that's what I was actually on. Started getting out there. Um, we went on a Westwood. Um, we, met, we met Westwood. We started doing a mic check on Link Up TV. Started getting on different platforms and stuff like that. Um, made a song called Problem. Um, saying that you don't want a problem, problem. I put on the Bella Carver at the time because no I was running a fully fledged hedge fund. In Mayfair, I was 21, I was on Brook Street, and right next to Claridge's. Um, I'm next door to me in my office, are billionaires. This guy is a multi-million. I'm seeing people buy patents for 1.8 million casually walking in the office. So I'm putting on a battle club on because I don't want them or their sons to, to go and click on YouTube one day and send um, a video of me rapping um, in my battle club or, or me rapping, sorry, with my bait face out and then next morning they're seeing me in, in, in the kitchen and we're, you know, he's asking me about music. I just wanted to separate the two. We were just joking around in a group chat and 
and then someone leaked it from the group chat because these times I'm a serious guy. I'm I'm putting thing like that whole. Um, I've now transformed from the football guy into the nice business guy. I'm in my suit. I'm in my tie. I've got my briefcase every single morning. I'm bucking the Arabs. I'm bucking the shakes. Well, good now. That's me. That's my branding. Ask anybody that saw my Instagram from 27, 2016 to 2018. They know that, look, that's, that's the branding. That's the guy. That's who the guy is. I wasn't trying to change that. So that is what I was sticking to. And that was meant to be the main flipping plan. But it went viral. BBC are now coming to us. ITV are now coming to us. Charlie Sloss now hollered at us. Tim Westwood's hollered at us. Logan Summers hollered. I'm thinking, these are my guys that I've grown up listening to. And these guys are shouting me to come and do um, freestyles for them. I still, to this day, I still can't believe I got a fire in the booth. And it's wrapped, don't need no mittens. I still dish kittens, but this ain't no flake. Left hand on the pot, right hand up to God as I put this hope on the pave. How will people know that I'm not doing a public Eskimo now? To be honest, you won't know, but there's been so many situations that's happened that I could have reacted to and I didn't. Um, if I haven't truly changed, then I've, I, I think even the streets know that certain situations that's happened um, with various amount of people, I would have reacted to and they know as well. So I feel like um, that's the evidence of me actually being changed, that me not reacting to things that I've actually would have in my past. This was scams like two, three years ago. It would have been a whole different scenario. Like people would have been, like it would have been trouble. You know what I mean? So I can see that he's calmed down from that. Um, I can see that he doesn't really care what people think of him now. Like I just, I, like, I just feel like he's getting, he's got, his, he knows where he wants to go now. Like before he was kind of lost. When you're in the ends, you don't know what you want to do when you're older and that. Like you're around people, they don't know what they want to do when they're older. You're smoking weed, all you want to do is make money and just <laughs> shoot people and you know what I mean? So now I feel like he's got a, he's got a goal and he's driving towards it now, so yeah. Yo, and Joe, I know it's like, I've seen this come to do a 4 for 60. Now he's successful, he's, he's um, changing other people's lives and that's rare to see. So I commend him for that, you get me? Like, I always love to see someone change their life and do something positive and that's what he's doing right now. So what is Limitless? Limitless is Limitless. That's why we even named it that. Because even me, me and S, I don't even know what that thing will become because it's, it's almost like an expansion of everything that there is existing. Limitless started because we saw a gap in the market um, and the whole of um, 2020, we was actually paying out a lot of money and we've seen a lot of artists pay out a lot of money but getting nothing back from it. And we've seen people, um, so many people in the industry spending their last £500 on a video hoping to make it in life, but actually they don't. Someone call it a record label. Someone call it a studio. Someone call it a production company. It's everything, it's all in one, and that it kind of encompasses who we are as, as, um, as, as people. So we're actually scouting that talent and helping that talent actually get out there. So we've actually gone from opening a studio and ventured into um, starting a production team. Um, ventured into artist development and as we've actually ventured into all those sides we're actually discovering um more and more what we actually have to do and my thing has always been people i don't think the industry have the capability or the capacity to sacrifice on the level in which i can simple or myself or s they can't do it if we're talking about sacrifice if we're talking about um creating platforms for people you've seen what we've done with things like hope dealers. You've seen what we've done in regards to other stuff. I've built, we've built multi-million pound businesses. So no one can come and tell us that we can't come in with the same, um, the same ferocity of, of, of mind to do certain things in different industries. Trust me, we, from the age of 21, I was paying 7K in Mayfair for my office from the age of 21. There's no big car that we haven't driven. This is from us cracking day and night, staying up from uh, to, to night until dawn, building and focusing on something, so. So what the studio's done for me is literally just evolve. Mm. So go from a one place to a bigger and better place, quicker and faster. Instead of me staying at home, 
because I don't have a lot of equipment. It's literally just a laptop and a Bluetooth speaker, and that's what I make my beats on. So me being in a, a bigger studio, I've got bigger speakers now. I'll be able to mix my beats better. I'll just be able to improve a lot faster. I've met gang members that don't have a penny in their pocket, and I'm wondering, but they have all the talent in this world, and I'm just wondering how we can actually help them. So um, we've started a production team, we started artist development, we've opened up a studio so they can actually come into and express themselves. Loads of artists at the moment that we just feel that the industry's just done them dirty because they just don't look a certain way or they just, they just don't want nothing to do with them because the industry's kind of like spat them out kind of thing or there's just no opportunities for them. So, and, and this is, leads me back to the point of what I was saying about, I just don't feel like many people can sacrifice like us. No one's willing to, to, to put, and I'm not, I'm not just talking about the usual sacrifices of just staying up and that. No one's willing to go and house somebody. I came from a dark place in a sense where past problems that I've had, and I felt like limitless picked me up to become a better person, made me understand way more about life. So what limitless is doing at the moment is adding value to people that don't even know um, they have anything because they will despise that value by being gang members, but that's actually not who they are. So I've realised that the one language that unifies all these gang members is actually music. So um, if I want to unify people like myself, how do I actually get through those doors is music. But there's a lot more to music than just making a song. People are just basically got nine to fives and they're coming to swindle. Like, you get me? Young kids, dreams, money away from them. So. Having this done by S Rose and Bread, like it's perfect because when you have people like me that have the experience in the game and you know, like for outlook and for, for knowledge and for motivation and you know, just for a direction to go in, like it's here, innit? You can't you can't ever cheat this because it's so natural and organic. It's limitless, blood. The best thing for me about limitless is being able to um, accommodate every different kind of artist there is. So some of them are are, are different. But I've just learned how to be intergalactic, like bread, um, coming from a different background, learning how to um, communicate with these type of people. I feel like music just needs a whole, music is about expression. So it needs a whole new expression, a whole new face, a whole new way of doing things and bringing that liberty back to music, bringing that thing back to entertainment in general, because it's, we don't just look after artists. They're, fr they're afraid of being themselves. They're afraid of being themselves. Why? Because they just know that I need to do this in order to get here, or I need to look like this in order to do this. Um, got in touch with Bread, then Bread sent me his email about music, because he was looking to invest in musicians and upcoming artists as well. And then I sent my, e um, my music to his email, then he was rocking with it. In this life, no risk, no reward. A lot of regret and their mistakes, wishing that they ignored. You get respect in the streets, participating in war. Limitless is just reaching out to every and um, every and any different kind of artist that is on, like in the world, and actually raising leaders out of those people. That's our agenda. That's what we believe in. That um, artists are no longer just people that can um, that could be bought out and and stuff like that. Artists are actually people that are leaders. They have a voice, they're speaking to the world, but can we actually um, fine tune and change their, change their words because it's actually words that change, like change a lot of things. And I've realized that myself, um, before I was living a certain lifestyle, in order for me to live a lifestyle now, I must have an alternative word. Um, so, and those alternative words that I was hearing in my past lifestyle that led me to live that lifestyle, but. Now, if we're going to live a different lifestyle, we have to hear um, an alternative words from the lifestyle that we're currently living. So, my relationship outside of the studio with Bread and S is like I'll go to their house, they'll put me on box, they'll show me like little movies, little things like that. Just we'll speak about life goals, um, we'll just make plans together, and he'll show me, Bread will show me things where I can improve life skills and the stuff that I can just take with me. Um, our message is simple. Um, we're raising leaders, raising the next generation of musicians, raising the next generation of engineers, raising the next um, generation of cameramen production team, raising the next generation of anything that we can get our hands on and we're building with the best team ever. You done, yeah? 
Love is big bread. You know what time it is. I came and asked everyone's questions. Yo, it's your boy S Rose. It's hard to be real when a fake world, so we created our own. It's about time that I reveal man's face, but you know what it is. It's big bread. Let's go. Same family. We good. I told you everything that you need to know or want to know. Look out for Limitless this year. We're taking over. Whenever you're ready. It's your boy, S. Rose. No, no. My name, oh, is, my name is... My name is... Okay, I'm going to wave it to you now. All right, cool. So I'm looking at this. I'm not looking... The waviness will come. Elise, you get me? You saying you got the rules on? <laughs> yeah? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't the rules. Hey, I'm funny. I'm funny. Hey, that's a clip. This is the streets. Hey, you, hey, you, you, you got it. You know, it's before scums, you got it.